In our last video, we left off at the American Theater at 234 Heron Avenue. And uh, while I was uh, researching, as I told you, it was destroyed by fire. And while I was uh, researching that, I found out two things. One, uh, that there was two other major fires on this side of the block. And two, my understanding of the Kresge building locations was incomplete. So I'd like to share this information with you, but let me first set the stage. Let me just back up a little bit here. Go back down here on. My Google Mobile isn't working. I think it needs a tune-up. Ah, here we go. All right. Yeah, well, we overshot it a little bit. What we want to look at basically are these three buildings right here. Now, most of us know this was a Valentine building at one time. And most, well, I don't know most of us, but some of us know, looking at my videos, that the area below these three windows, this storefront right here, was the first Kresge store, the first five and ten in Fort Huron. Also, the only the second uh, five and ten in the chain, first being in Detroit. This building right here, uh, originally it was the J.W. Golding building. Later on, this would be Woolworths. And this location right here was where the Hager and Sons store was. Notice I said location and not building. They weren't in this building. This building was actually built for somebody else. So now that you have that understanding, let me see if I can explain these fires to you. We'll start with the building that houses Jimmy John's in this photograph. This is the one that used to be the J.W. Golding building. Mr. Golding had a partner by the name of C.E. Barrett. This article was their 27th anniversary, and uh, they're telling about the inside of the store and the things that they carried and so forth. This article was written in 1903. It was a year later, in 1904, that the fire occurred. Another big fire in the heart of the city. J.W. Golding & Company store wiped out by the blaze. Ten and five cent store, a loss, others damaged. Of course, the ten and five cent store was Krispies. It goes on below to show you the different losses at the different stores. Keep in mind that $1,000 back in 1904 is about the same as $30,000 today. So these losses were quite substantial. The fire originated in the basement and spread it quite rapidly to the second and third floors. That was early in the morning. Ruined the store and stock of the J.W. Golding and Company and Kresge and Wilson 5 and 10 cent store and also damaged the interior of the Ballantyne Dry Goods store and Hager's Big Store. One of the reasons there was so much damage to uh, Kresge and Wilson store is uh, the fact that it was spread through the two buildings quite quickly. And the reason for that is because uh, Golding, of course, had their second and third story that they owned, but they also used the second and third story of the Kresge Wilson building. So there was an opening between the two buildings because the customers would be able to go back and forth between the two stores on the same floors. Of course, it didn't help when they made the call to the fire department. There was a miscommunication and the fire department actually went to Golden's home instead of to their business. Fort Huron had two newspapers at this time and this was the front page of the Daily Herald. And this is the front page of the Fort Huron Daily Times. Not quite as much space given to it, but basically the same story, just not as much detail as the other paper. The decision to rebuild the store was immediate. They wanted to rebuild at once, and that's what they did. The consensus of opinion about scrolling through these different articles in the newspaper has been pretty positive. A lot of folks like to, to read the actual stories, 
Well, that's why I'm scrolling through these uh, papers, sometimes very rapidly, but you can always stop and pause and read it. This is the article that appeared in the paper for their grand opening. Golding's new store will open Thursday between the hours of 7 and 9 in the evening. It is modern in every detail. And it was. It was different than the other stores. You can't really tell so much from uh, the drawing on this article. But we actually have a photograph of that building, uh, the new building. Uh, well, a postcard taken from a photograph. Uh, this was for the governor's parade that was in Port Huron at the time. This was probably taken uh, three to four years uh, after the store was built. The building to the right of the store is the Kresge store, and the building to the left of the store is the Hager and Son store. But you can see there's quite a difference. You know, the, the, first of all, it had a lighter color brick. It really stood out between those two stores. And look at that second story window, much different than anything around it at the time. So it was quite modern uh, for that time period. Also, you know, the store has a new occupant, Kirby Company. So the Golding Company only lasted three or four years after the store was built. This Kresge store is the only one in town up until about 1923, when this appeared in the newspaper. Old Sperry site leased by Kresge Company. New two-story structure plan for Huron and Grand River Corner. And it goes on and says that they had a 99-year lease. Must have broke that lease someplace along the line because 99 years isn't up yet and there's no Kreskis around. But back then it was pretty exciting. Two Kresky stores on the same block. The Times Herald dedicated three pages uh, to the grand opening. And here's the first page. Kresge, 25 cents to a dollar store, opens Saturday. New dollar store completed will employ 75 girls. 12th of kind open this year in country, 46 of department chain. And here's the second page. Well, it has the same title at the top of the page. Down below it says Kresge's growth like story from Arabian Nights. A great chain of stores rose from humble beginning to today's affluence. On page 3, a lot of this page is just work from contractors that worked on the building, congratulating uh, Kresge for opening their new building and probably congratulating themselves that they made some money on it. I purposely didn't scroll through these three pages because I didn't feel there's anything historically newsworthy in it. We have a much better picture of the new Kresge building, and, and here it is. I cover at the Kresge store in my very first video, so if you want to know more about the Kresge store in that corner, uh, you can look at that video. I couldn't figure out why they would have two stores in the same block. But as I was doing my research, uh, I realized that there were two different types of Kresge stores. One was the 25 cents to a dollar store, and the other one was 5 cents to 10 cents store, a 5 and 10. Which was hard for me to understand because I always refer to this, this store as a 5 and 10. But actually it was a 25 cents and a dollar. So that just goes to show you what I know. I also didn't realize that the 25 cents and a dollar store had a green backing to the lettering that you see here. So this would have been a green front store and the five and 10 cent would have had a red backing and would have been a red front store. And I found that out by reading the fine print on this ad. Red front, five and 10 cent stores, green front, 25 to a dollar store. There are several ads of the 25 cents to a dollar store, but I could only find one ad from the original store that was on the south end of the block and that's this one right here. Several things about this ad kind of gives you an idea of the error that it was uh, advertised in. Uh, look, at, uh, look at some of these things that they're uh, talking about as far as their departments are concerned. 
postcards. No one advertises postcards anymore, but they were very popular back then. And dry goods. The merchandise isn't referred to as dry goods anymore. And on the other side, you've got uh, gas lamp fixtures and you've got uh, tinware. Just things you don't see much of anymore. 20 big departments filled with the highest grade of merchandise and nothing over 10 cents. I like what it says at the bottom. Fares refunded by this store according to the cooperative schedule during special bargain week. The fares they're referring to is streetcar fares. All right, that brings us back to this building, uh, Lynch's Irish Tavern today. But at one time, this location uh, was at uh, Al Higgers and Sons store. And I originally thought they were in this particular building, but come to find out, they were in a different building, a building that was destroyed by fire. Well, it's very difficult to get a picture of that. But I did find something I think to give you a pretty good idea what it looks like. There's a photograph of something else, and this building was in the background. Very good photograph, by the way, so we can zoom in pretty good on it. So this is a photograph here. This is a very clear photograph taken of the white building on Water Street, and that's in the foreground. In the background, you can see the downtown area quite clearly. So let's zoom in here a little bit. Black River would be between this building and the rest of the town, of course. Uh, over here, you can see, I'll uh, go down a little bit closer. These gas tanks right here, that's from the gas company. Those were between Grand River and uh, Quay Street. And uh, over here, you can see Firehouse number two, that's the tower of it. That's the old Port Huron High School gym there. And the sheriff's office. There's the courthouse. That's the Howard building that burned down. And you can just see the top of the dome or half of the dome there, the uh, Maccabees building or later the Algonquin Hotel. And a couple of small turrets there and there. Let's come in here a little bit more. I like this because right down in here, look at this. You can see the clothes hanging on the line behind the store. So they must have had tenants or the owner above the store there. And let's go over here. Over here, this is the Pacific Hotel. See all the dormers going along Grand River. And then as we come over here, This right here is a store that was at that location that burned down, Al Higer and Sons. And you can see, well, let's see if I can get it just a little bit closer. Yeah, you can see the different things that they sold, hats and shoes, and clothing and furnishings. And they even put their advertisements on their awnings out here. And of course, I had a quite ornate uh, top of the, to the building as well. March 4th, 1932. This was the front page of the Port Yarn Times Herald. Higgers store destroyed by fire. Fire starts at midnight. $150,000 loss. Firemen battle blaze until dawn save an entire Huron Avenue block from destruction. It appears that the fire started in the basement and came up to the first floor, second floor, and third floor. Pretty much destroyed the entire building. Uh, what was left was basically the four walls. When asked whether the structure will be rebuilt, the owner of the building, Mr. Walsh, said there is no doubt that we will rebuild, but right now there is no definite plans. The fire was discovered by patrolman Virgil James while patrolling his Huron Avenue beat at 11.50 p.m. He noticed smoke seeping through the doors and windows of the store and turned in an alarm. Within a few minutes, the city's entire firefighting equipment manned by firemen from four houses 
was battling the flames. Later on, they would also call the Marysville House to help out with the fire. The news of the fire spread quickly, and through the night, a crowd of spectators watched the spectacular blaze. Many of the spectators became volunteer firemen and relieved regular firemen in handling the hoses. About 16 lines of hose poured thousands of gallons of water on the flames for several hours, and about 30 firefighters worked feverishly to confine the fire to the building in which it started. At 4.30 a.m. Thursday, firemen had the blaze under control and were permitted to ease up. It's interesting to note that at the time of the fire, Mr. Hager's store was going through bankruptcy. Bankruptcy proceedings had started several weeks prior to the fire, but had not reached the stage where a receiver had been appointed. Pending the outcome of the bankruptcy proceedings, Mr. Hager and his associates made a proposal of settlement with the Hager store creditors, and the proposition was under consideration at the time of the fire. The next day, this photograph appeared in the, the paper, along with a vote on beer tax. <laughs> Maybe that was more important than the destruction of the building, who knows. But anyway, this picture here shows the destruction, but you can't really see it very plainly. But you can see daylight going right through the building, through the different windows, but the walls are pretty much still there, I think. On May 26, this appeared in the paper. New store to replace Hager building soon. Walsh interest will erect structure to be occupied by Kresge. The SS Kresge Company has closed a 20-year lease with the Robert Walsh estate, this city, and the Walsh interest of Detroit for the property on Huron Avenue, formerly occupied by Al Hager and Son. The new store would replace the store that was in the Ballantyne building five and ten cents store. But that wouldn't happen for a while. So at one time, Kresge actually had three stores on the east side of the 200 block of Huron Avenue. But eventually, the Kresge and the Ballantyne building moved to the new store. The local quarter is now the most modern in chain. Jericho tells what it was like in the new store. First of all, the soda fountain would be the finest soda fountain obtainable. The main floor was devoted to merchandising departments and offices. The basement contains a store stock room and the kitchen where food sold at the fountain on the main floor are cooked. Five electric refrigerators kept food, ice cream, and sellable condition. Marble in the fountain on the main floor was quarried in France. 100 men and women will be employed in the new store. Pottery sold in the local store is made by the Mount Clements Pottery Company, owned and operated by the S.S. Kresge Company. I worked at Mount Clements for a long time, and I know about the Mount Clements Pottery Company, but I never knew it was owned by Kresge. Something else I didn't know. It says here that the first $1,000 Mr. Kresge borrowed for business was loaned to him by the First National Bank of Port Huron. Imagine that. I believe this is probably the architect's drawing of the building, but it looks familiar, doesn't it? Well, that's because it's here today as Lynch's Tavern. Someday, some historian 50 years from now will say, there used to be a tavern here by the name of Lynch's. So whatever happened to Hager's? Well, they opened up under a new name, Hager Outfitters. It says they lease a new store. Well, it might have been new to them, but it certainly wasn't a new store because probably the oldest store in Port Huron. That's the store right next to the Military Street Bridge on the east side. This is the only photo I've ever seen of the Hager store at that location. And it's the only time that I've ever seen uh, an addition added to the front of the building, which is now long gone. Not the building, the addition. Well, we got sidetracked pretty good in this video, although I thought it was interesting. But we never got to the next theater. But I promise you, we'll get to the next theater in our next video. So join me then.